Good afternoon, everybody. It is your eye expert, Dr. K, and today we've just got another case. This is a little bit of a denser cataract. We did oh, in the last week or so. So make our side port, a little bit of lidocaine, and then we will place our viscoelastic. See if we get a good fill here. There we go. That is pretty nice. Don't forget to wiggle the cannula on the way out to get some of those bubbles out if you need to. We'll make our five millimeter mark on the surface and make a nice square incision. When I put that stabilization ring down, I put the spikes up so that we don't create any subconjunctival hemorrhages. <clears throat> square incision will make our capsulorexis. Just try and follow that mark a little bit. And we'll see how, how we do these denser cataracts differently, maybe from a softer lens. Um, I just kind of breeze through watching this case. I haven't really watched it in its entirety. There, you don't want to go too far out. You want to keep it centered. And just sometimes take your time doing the capsular excess, get it nice and round. I, I find that it mostly gets out of round this last, I don't know, 25, 20 to 25% of the capsular excess. So sometimes I'll regress multiple times, really just to keep it, the capsular excess appearing circular rather than oval. Um, I just want the appearance to be um, kind of symmetric. We'll do our hydrodissection and a little bit of hydrodelineation, and we'll get that lens to spin. Here you can see the hydrodelineation wave. Now a little more viscoelastic is usually what we'll do, and then phaco handpiece. See if we test that phaco handpiece before we put it in the eye. Let's see. Yeah, a little bit there. So make sure you test the phaco handpiece before you put it in. Now let's see how dense this is. We'll clear off the central cortical material and then, so that's pretty dense. Um, really, you're pushing the lens around. You don't want to do that too much. Um, so get a couple of scopes, get a little purchase. And, you know, density is something you have to get used to to understand this one. Um, it's dense enough so that even though I didn't sculpt very far, it's going to kind of crack. Sorry for having my finger there on that second instrument in the way of the view. Um, I guess it was just choked down on the, on the second instrument. Now, we made a quadrant, but that quadrant is pretty big, and it's stuck in the rest of the lens. It's not really well separated. We'll see if it comes out. There we go. We got it out. Notice the primary handpiece is just central. It's not moving very much. There's not a lot of motion. Wiggle it a little bit to kind of adjust the cataract, the piece of the cataract on the tip of the handpiece. Now we'll chop again. So most of the energy here is just breaking up and we're pulling out and breaking up the pieces. We didn't do a lot of sculpting because it was going to take a lot of energy to do the sculpting. And you don't need to, really. If you can sculpt it to a depth where you can crack safely, then you can switch to quadrant removal mode and chop the rest. Keep those pieces central, and probably right at the plane of the capsule or the iris. And usually, as we get more of the lens removed, I'll transition more to fakeling in the bag. Now we're CDE of almost eight here, so we'll put some more viscoelastic in to protect that cornea. Usually, I'll put in as, as much as I've got. Um, if it's really dense, then I'll open a second viscoelastic, but I'll just put in whatever I have left. Break that piece. Now you can see we're deeper in the eye. And we are fakeling kind of in the bag here. You want to be careful. That fakeled handpiece is kind of angled down, so you want to make sure that your second instrument is behind, holding the capsule back in case there's any trampolining of that capsular bag. Get that last piece out. Fakel stays central, and there we go. Now we'll take out our epinucleus. Again, if you're pointing that fake handpiece towards the poster capsule, make sure there's a second instrument there behind it. Perfect. All right, so CDE of 11, not a soft cataract. Uh, I don't think we overused FACO in this situation, although you, know, you could always manually dismantle the lens more if you wanted to. Now we'll switch to IA. See, make sure with this kind of um, consistency of a lens, you want to make sure there are no nuclear chips floating around sometimes when it's there's one right there when it's 
a little bit more of a brittle lens like that, those nuclear chips will kind of shoot all over the AC. They can get a little bit behind the iris. And so sometimes you want to irrigate fluid back there just to be sure that there are no pieces hiding. We get the remainder of our vortex here. And then you can see there's a little PCO there. We can kind of power wash that away. We'll also use that to look for nuclear chips, but potentially sometimes they'll come out when you're irrigating. And there you go. You're looking, just looking for pieces there. You can see there's a little retained viscose laterally there, but that's okay. So we've got a nice round capsular axis. We will use our polisher remove some of those lens epithelial cells, just kind of clean things up a little bit. And we'll get ready to put that lens in. I like this instrument for cleaning the LECs I've tried to use. There's a circular sweep that I've tried to use where you but you go in through the main incision for both sides and I just find it a little more difficult to use, although it might actually be better at removing the LECs. All right, we'll put our lens in. It's folded nicely. I always usually use the second instrument really to free up, <clears throat> excuse me, free up that posterior or the trailing haptic because a lot of times it is stuck on the surface of the optic and it doesn't always easily um, liberate itself. I do think it's because our operating room is a little colder. When it's warmer, it doesn't tend to do that. So we'll get out our probus from behind the lens. And then we will sweep our angle to make sure that there are there is not any residual viscoelastic. You can hear the dog in the background, maybe. Okay, so we got out all our viscoelastic. Try and get a little, if there's any LECs just sitting there, that's what we're trying to do, just get those out. And then we will seal our incisions. You can see there's good overlap of the capsular bag and the lens. It's going to be nicely centered. And really that's what people are going to see when you're done. They're going to see the incisions and capsular overlap. So we will put in a little bit of moxie and seal up those incisions. Check our incisions, and that was a good case. All right, folks, have a great day.